when you uh, have to go to sleep at night and your bed is a cement floor or an entryway and your pillow is a backpack, something's wrong. There's so many misconceptions about folks that are homeless. What I find or have found that something terribly has gone wrong in a person's life and that's why they're in uh, the situation they're in. But I can say um, I have friends on the street, friends that I know and uh, when we do outreach people look for us they expect us to be around and for some that's their bright spot of the day and that's so so important so I have started back in 2009 and uh, John Joyce and Megan Smith started it up because of the need to have constituent voice, people's voices weren't being heard. And um, they felt like, you know, when they would complain about something, it was falling on deaf ears. When John and I had moved <clears throat> to the South Side, we also recognized that it's not just downtown, it's, it's everywhere in Providence and, and ultimately the state. But um, so we started doing outreach up in the south side and we found so many people that were homeless uh, living outside or they would just go to shelters and then they would be out on the street the next day. So that was really John Freitas and my uh, first experience doing outreach and the need for it. I used to live a wild lifestyle for quite a few years and uh, a lot of my friends got killed, a lot of them died, died from drug overdoses. After about three years of living like this, you know, alcoholic days, I uh, decided I was going to kill myself. And I was thinking how to do it one day and I'm not a preacher. I don't go to church or belong to a church, but that day I uh, get on my knees and cried out to Jesus Christ, and uh, something changed me that day. A few months later, my life started getting better, and I remember the days when I was in the city, like some of the people I see today, wandering around in entryways and doorways just spending time and I never forgot that so I started going back down city and I did that for a few years just by myself meeting people talking to people I met you know trying to just get to know them and that's when I met uh, I found out about Rihap I met Barbara and John and I started doing street outreach, and I've been doing it now for a couple of years. And uh, it, this is my life. <laughs> so the purpose of nighttime outreach is basically threefold. The first is that we're providing basic necessities for, like immediate necessities for people, which includes food, water, um, and rip ticks, so those are bus passes for people to get to and from shelters. The second reason is um, because a lot of homeless uh, people experiencing homelessness deal with social, is social isolation. Um, it's important for as outreach workers that we're just a, uh, a person there to hear anyone's story and to be someone there to talk to them and understand what it is that they're going through. The third reason that we do outreach is for our long-term goals of ending homelessness, which entails connecting people with resources such as um, caseworkers or helping them fill out a VI spit out form to get on the housing list for Rhode Island State Affordable Housing. In the bag we have shelter guides, food, rip ticks, um, pamphlets about SNAP benefits, first aid kits, water, 
hand warmers, um, feminine hygiene products, flashlight, and Narcan. One of the most challenging things about outreach is um, probably what sometimes outreach gets criticized for, which is that it's a band-aid for kind of the bigger um, fight against homelessness, which to a certain extent is true. So it's definitely a challenge when you encounter someone that you like right away and that you really want to help and you understand their situation, but you know that ultimately like you might not be able to do anything other than fill out their, an application for them to get on the housing list, but that list might take years for them just to get into a place. And so you feel like the only thing you can really do that night is give them a granola bar or water. But I mean, really the important thing, the best, one of the best things about outreach is that you get to actually build relationships with people and you get to see them, whether it's once a week when you go out or once every couple of months. Um, and just seeing them again and being someone there that you know that that you're each other's friend um and that's kind of like it's a challenge with outreach but it's also one of the best things about outreach i think and then there's a lot of heartbreaking stuff out there on the street a lot of heartbreaking stuff and when i first started doing this uh with right half i said man you know sometimes it get overwhelming and I said, oh, man, I, how can I fix this? How can I fix that? And I had to come, I can't fix it. So I said, you can make a little difference just by going out, talking to people, getting to know people. Yes, I'll say when I came to Brown, um, I was looking for, I was big into um, service in high school, and I wanted to continue that with my time at Brown. And I found hope um, through the activities there, and I just... Uh, was really drawn to sort of the direct service component of outreach, um, really being able to uh, directly impact the people in our community uh, to sort of supplement the advocacy side of hope. And I think that that's why um, I want to do outreach specifically was because, you know, advocacy, advocacy can only go so far, but direct outreach can only go so far too. So sort of combining those two, um, I think, really was something that I was looking for um, and also um, the other part of it, the other big part of it for me was to be able to gain perspective um, on, on our community um, because I heard coming in you know about the brown bubble and I definitely knew that that would be um, an issue that I sort of wanted to get outside of um, and being able to interact directly with the people of our community um, not just with the people that we serve but with RIHAP um, and with the fellow Hope Hopesters um, was something that I was really looking for, and I think it's really um, been something that I found with outreach. When you do outreach, that's probably the first connection people have to getting the ball rolling into housing and getting connected to services that they need. Why is outreach important? Uh, that's the reason because you are the first person that they are going to see that will maybe determine th the rest of their journey. And I think it's really important to go to um, the people that are on the streets um, and provide the services. Coordinator Jack has already mentioned um, because the homeless are really a community that otherwise you don't see um, and if you don't make a very conscious effort to reach out to them it's very easy to like ignore the this like major problem that um, just exists. Um, so not only do I like, I guess it's three parts. I wanna of course like help the homeless like on like like immediate first um, aid like basis. Then I also want to like um, for me just like get off the college hill and like interact with people um, that I usually don't see because I think you have a lot of, to learn from them um, that many people don't realize often um, and I think it's really important to like get the perspective of these people that are so often not heard and then third I think I I think it's really important um, to raise awareness um, which is what I think we do a lot also with hope um, and it's not only the advocacy advocacy side but also um, much about the outreach um, to like um, be able to share the experiences we have on the street um, and uh, yeah share that with others and hopefully like get others involved. Uh, words of wisdom for new outreach workers. Um, 
you need to be safe and safety is our is the main goal but in also don't think that you know everything and sometimes I, I mean I know I don't know everything but you can always say I'll find out the answer to that and I'll get back to you it's not a shame to um, to say I don't know the answer to it and we always always don't don't promise anything to anybody because they've already been disappointed enough in their life by family friends whoever so we never make a promise that we know that we can't personally keep and don't be afraid to make mistakes because you're going to make mistakes um, but hopefully they're not big ones all right <laughs> Whoever does outreach, don't ever think you're not doing something. You may not see results uh, right away, but believe me, you are definitely making a difference. You know, amidst all the heartbreak, there are always sprinkled good things that happen. When a person finally gets an apartment, you know, when uh, a person gets a case manager and you're doing better, that's great. That, that's just wonderful. Everyone deserves a better life. Everyone deserves a home. People who listen to this, uh, who are thinking about outreach, go for it. Go for it, man. It will be... It'll change your heart for the better. And like I said before, you'll be making, you will be making a difference.